this if reposted. You live in the greater metropolitan Los Angeles area, Mr. Keller. So therefore, you probably know that the Dodgers are the current World Series champions and that the Lakers are the reigning champions of your National Basketball Association. I have to be happen to be big fans of both those teams, which brings us to our quote in an article on Life Hacker entitled, Why Sports Makes You Miserable, According to Science. Here's the quote. In the hour immediately after their team wins, researchers found a typical fan might feel about 3.9 points happier than usual, about the same boost as from listening to music. That's more than offset by the 7.8 points of extra sadness that fans feel in the hour after their team loses, an event that makes respondents feel about twice as sad as they would after working, studying, or waiting in line. Uh, you are a huge Colorado Buffaloes fan. You ran in the Buffalo. You went to school there. Of course, big connection. So it seems as like you understand what this feels to win and lose with a team. Yeah, I mean, I have pretty big swings on on watching Colorado football. It's probably the only sport or the only team that can get me that way. I'm kind of curious. I read this article. I don't know what these points mean. Is it out of 100? Because my happiness goes to 11. Do you know what that means? Do you know how they measure that? I don't, you know, once again, those are details. I mean, it doesn't really matter. The whole point is that it's you, you feel like you're getting a great boost. And, and coaches have said this in professional sports. They say, you know, wins are great, but I feel the losses way more than I do the wins. So fans feel the same way. Yeah. And I mean, that kind of applies in life. I remember some of the lessons I learned the hardest in my career were when I failed and then like those weigh on you versus like, things going right you don't really remember as much because it's pretty jarring um but i would say i i'm probably an anomaly i i'd say waiting in line gets me more upset than colorado <laughs> losing uh, i hate waiting in line but that's just a personal thing uh yeah i mean it's it's interesting that people are willing to go down this road and i guess statistically your team's not going to win and by these numbers you're going to be more than or about twice as sad as you will be happy. So why do we keep showing up? Yeah, why are there so many sports fans in the world if what we're doing is really perpetuating misery? How would you explain that to someone? I mean, I feel like it's kind of tribal, right? Once again, back on the Serengeti, we started rooting for what horse would win or whatever. But I would say the average person in the world, I'd say more than half of the people in the world don't care about sports. Yeah, well, I don't know if that number is right, but uh, I think that there's an identity that you have with it. So I think people that are more diehard, like they, that's like what you said, it's tribal. It's like, this is my tribe and this is what I'm behind. And it gives you an identity. And if you don't have something other than sports, sports is an easy thing to lo log into. But I would say the people that aren't that into sports have something that they kind of hang their hat on because otherwise you're rudderless. And I think it's a, it's a common beacon that people can grab onto. You know, the fan, the word fan comes from the word fanatical, which is like obsessively crazy about a team, which I'm not. I don't connect with that. Like, I love sports because I feel like it gives us a respite from the crazy world. My kids love it. We root for it. I love going to games. But being fanatical, like, you know, back in the 80s, um, soccer fans, hooligans started fighting each other or people getting majorly depressed after the Eagles lost. I don't connect with that at all. Sports is like a once again, a respite from normalcy, but I don't understand the fanaticalness of it. Yeah, I don't either, but I mean, I went to a Alabama Tennessee game in Knoxville and we were leaving and Alabama had lost. This was before Saban was there. And my friend was a Tennessee fan and he was talking trash to some Alabama fans. And this guy pulled a knife out when we were pretty close to the car. So we ran, got in the car and drove away. And that was kind of scary. But I mean, those kinds of things happen more often well not more often but they happen frequent more frequently than they should like if you go to an oakland raiders game you might or a las vegas raiders game you might get stabbed but i mean just to make that point when i first moved to the bay area brian stowe was a dodge G giants fan in la and he got beat up by a bunch of dodgers fans and he's now paralyzed because he, it, there's arguments of whether he instigated this whole thing but nevertheless a dodger fan beat up a guy that put him in a wheelchair for the rest of his life yeah, I mean, I would say maybe you're fanatical about your family. Like I said, like you, you're more interested in that than you are the Dodgers. And so, 
maybe that's it. But like, I think that the reason people are getting so into sports is it gives them uh, a beacon of light to look for. You know, one of my favorite actual sports team is Liverpool, which is a um, soccer team in England. And the reason I love them is because they play exciting brand football. Now that's not always been the case but they have a coach who calls it heavy metal football where they're always trying to score. They're running up and down the field and it's fun to watch. That's why that team is fun. But you know, cause there's some teams that play the wrong way. They play boring, like baseball's kind of turned into a home run or not. It's hard to watch a three hour baseball game because most of it is just pitching, maybe a home run and once in a while, like I like sports that capture you and teams that play the right way. I also root for owners. Like I love owners that, um, seem like Jerry Jones. You could argue Jerry is a good owner, a bad owner, but he passionately cares about his team. Maybe so much so that he's ruined it, but you kind of root for Jerry just in the fact that he loves his team. That's why you're an owner. Yeah. I mean, I guess maybe also what you're saying is you're rooting for entertainment, like Mark Cuban, all Dallas owners are interesting. I guess Mark Cuban's willing to get a $50,000 fine because he wanted to be courtside and yell at the referee (laughs) versus Robert Kraft, who's flying down to Florida to get a massage versus trying to cheer on the Patriots. You know, I feel like, you know, just back to this idea of we all have this sort of primal instinct to root for something, but I know lots of people that aren't sports fans. They're like fans of the opera or whatever. If you're not into sports at all, do you still have that gene where you want to see competition? And then how is it explained if you're like a fan of the opera instead of sports? I mean, I think so. The Oscars just happened and being in Los Angeles, I have a lot of people that, who like to pretend they don't know anything about sports when the Super Bowl's on. They say, oh, the sports ball is happening. <laughs> but these people lose their minds about whatever happens in the Oscars. And I have an acting class tomorrow, and I dread the recap at the beginning because everyone's going to talk about the Oscars and how upset they are that something happened or how happy they are that something happened. So, I mean, I see it with the arts. People get very excited about accolades or getting into different festivals. It's... um people follow directors like you follow Jerry Jones. And also too, it really is all about the drama of something. A good story is a movie, a good story about an actor winning the awards, telling their story and same with sports, right? I mean, it's about the, the, the kid that overcame everything to become the first baseman of the Dodgers or had a broken leg and played through it all. It's always about the drama of the game. So have you ever watched a team or do you have any team that if they lost, you would be upset? If they lost a championship game, you'd be upset for more than five minutes. Yeah, I mean, upset's a relative turn. I'm definitely kind of foul for a little bit. But man, I I feel like it's hard when you just have three kids at home that it, we just, I don't have a huge amount of time to just wallow in my misery without taking them outside to do something or, you know, cook a meal or something. Yeah, well, I like when you cook. (laughs) <laughs> if you want Larry to make you dinner, please reach out or share this podcast with a friend. You can find us on social media at Reposted Podcast, Facebook, Twitter, Instagram. I'm Andrew Keller for Liverpool saying thanks for stopping by.